Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Ned Bellavance, Ned1313 on Twitter, and welcome to the Daily Check-In for November 5th, 2020. It's Thursday, and that means it's home labbing Thursday, and I'm kind of recording this a little bit late because it took me a little while to get everything working that I wanted to show you today. And what am I going to show you? I'm going to show you Ubuntu 20, uh, 20.04 or whatever, LTS running the ARM version, running on Raspberry Pis that are running ESXi. Now, in previous videos, I showed you how you can load ESXi on a Raspberry Pi with the ARM fling from VMware, and I showed you how you can add that to your vCenter server. And now, what do I have? I have a three-node cluster running in my vCenter, and it's three Raspberry Pis and they all have that ESXi image on them. And there's actually a new version of the image, so I had to re-image all of them. I also went out and got some 128 gig Samsung USB 3 thumb drives to go in there. So when I install ESXi, I have plenty of space to create virtual machines on it as well. And I don't have anything else plugging in. The downside is there's no shared storage between the nodes, but the upside is the thumb drives were like really cheap. So <laughs> I guess you got to balance out the, the, the cost with what's cool, right? So what I wanted to show you today is how you can actually get some virtual machines running on that. Now, before I talk about that, I want to check in with you. So how you doing? How's Thursday? I, ah, oh, it's been a crazy week very busy and and also just a lot of stress. So I hope I hope you're doing okay. I've said this all week. I hope you're taking care of yourself and and making some time for you. And if you haven't, you know what? Pause this video. Go go do something else that you find incredibly relaxing unless you find the sound of my voice incredibly relaxing, in which case <laughs> continue to view on. All right. So like I said, I am going to show you three things basically. One is how I installed Ubuntu 20 ARM version on a virtual machine from an ISO running on a Raspberry Pi. So I'm going to show you that. And then I'm going to show you how I can vMotion that virtual machine from one Raspberry Pi to another, which that's ridiculous. And then the last thing I'm going to show you is I created a template from another instance of Ubuntu and you can now deploy additional virtual machines from that template. So all the, like the VMware stuff that you're used to using in vSphere, it all just kind of works with this ESXi arm fling. It's, it's really cool. So let's cut over to the video and afterwards I will be back to wrap up. All right, here we go. This is my vCenter server. It's called VCSA bellalab.local. And this is one of the Raspberry Pis. I called it rpi.bellalab.local. Here's another one. This is RPI2. You can see that's the same model of Raspberry Pi. And here's RPI3. So I've got three different Raspberry Pis all in the same DRS cluster. I don't have DRS enabled, but I do have them in the same cluster. And they all have their own individual data store because all I have connected to them is one 128 gig USB stick. Now, the one thing I wanna configure for these hosts is I want all of them to have vMotion enabled and they only have a single physical network port. So what I'm gonna do is go look at the VM kernel adapters and I'm just gonna enable the management VM kernel adapter to also be used for vMotion. So I already have that configured on this ESXi server, and I configured it on Raspberry Pi one, uh, 2 and 3. So vMotion should work. And you can see I already have a virtual machine running called UB1, but let's create a new one from scratch. All right, so we'll call this one UB2. Why not? Ubuntu 2. That's the second one. And when I move on to the next one, you're going to see I have to select a Raspberry Pi node for this to go on, and I'm going to pick RPI3. Remember that this one's going on RPI3. I'll pick the data store that I want it to be on. I'm going to keep the compatibility for 7.0 and later, and I have to change the guest OS to Linux and change the version of Linux to Ubuntu Linux 64-bit. Now, I already downloaded the ISO. Let's see, I got one CPU, one gig of memory, and 16 gig of hard drive space. We're keeping this thing pretty sparse, right? Because my Raspberry Pi, let's be honest, doesn't have that much capacity on it. All right, so here it is. Let's go ahead and launch the remote console and we can boot this thing up. But before we do that, we have to attach an ISO that we're gonna use to install the operating system. So I'll go into edit virtual machine settings and I am going to select an ISO that's available on my local desktop. It's the Ubuntu 20 
arm release. So I just went and grabbed that directly from the website, downloaded it, and now it's gonna be mounted on this virtual machine when it fires up. Now, the other thing I need to do is go into options. And the thing that I wanna change under options is down in advanced. You can see me hunting around for it a little bit, but it's, it's down there in advanced. I have to change the firmware type to BIOS instead of UEFI. And that's just an artifact of the fact that it's booting up on Raspberry Pi. If you don't do that, it won't recognize the ISO and it won't boot properly. All right, so now I'm gonna power on this virtual machine. It will mount that ISO and say, you know, do you wanna try Ubuntu or do you wanna install it? Well, I want to install it. So I will select install. Now bear in mind, this image is streaming across the network from my client machine all the way to that Raspberry Pi. So I have sped up this process tremendously, but the boot time probably took in the range of three to four minutes. Now this is also going across a wireless network just because of the vagaries of my lab. So it took a little longer. Your mileage may vary, but don't be surprised if it takes a few minutes to get to the installer wizard. Now that we're here, I can select the proper language. I can select the proper keyboard type. I'm basically gonna walk through the standard default settings for the installation. And unfortunately, because of the resolution, you can't see the done and the top of the screen at the same time, but we'll work through that. All right, so I set up no proxy. I'm gonna use the entire disk that's being presented, that whole 16 gig, and it'll set up the partitions for me as needed. And then for my name, I'll just put in my name. I'm gonna call this server UB2, since that's the name of the virtual machine, might as well keep it consistent, and go ahead and put in a username and password. Now, we're not gonna to have to do this every time. I just wanted to show you what it looks like building a virtual machine from scratch. I'll go ahead and install OpenSSH. There we go, it is now going through the installation process. And you won't be surprised to learn the installation process does take quite a while. I think this entire process took on the range of 10 minutes to install, maybe almost 15. That's close, closer to 10. So I have sped up the whole process for this as well because you don't you don't want to sit through that. Okay, once it reboots, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to go ahead and detach the ISO that I have attached so it can boot off of its local storage. So I go ahead and do that and it will automatically boot and boot into Ubuntu 20. All right, so it's gonna run through its whole boot process and I should get to a command prompt shortly. The boot process is gonna take a little while too. That's just the nature of the beast. This thing is not gonna be the fastest thing in the world. And we just, you know, you have to acknowledge it's running on a Raspberry Pi and it's a vir virtual machine on a Raspberry Pi. That's, that's a lot to ask of it. All right, so I logged in, my login works. I can do a uname and look at what the version of Linux is that's running. And there we go. Okay, so we've gone through the process of standing up a virtual machine. We don't wanna do this every time, obviously. We do want to create a template for this eventually. But before we do that, I think I wanted to show how we can vMotion this virtual machine from one Raspberry Pi to another. So I'll go ahead and select migrate out of this list. That's right, we're gonna vMotion this bad boy. And because there's no shared storage between the, ver the two hosts, I have to select that I'm going to move both of them. I'm going to, both the compute and the storage, I should say. So I'm gonna mu move it to RPI one and select the data store that exists on RP1, RPI one and the virtual networks are the same. So I went through that whole process and now it's gonna go ahead and start moving that virtual machine. And I think this probably took about eight or nine minutes because it is moving the actual storage bits as well as moving the compute over. That obviously takes a while. If you have some sort of shared infrastructure between the two, if you have NFS mounted or something, then obviously this migration is gonna go a lot faster. All right, so now we can see that the host says RPI bellalab.local. So it moved from RPI three to RPI one. That's done. What And uh, we can see that the virtual machine is still running. UB2 is still running as we would expect. All right, what's the next thing we want to do? Well, I took UB, oh, well, I wanted to show that this is running VMware tools and there is no default installer bundled with vSphere that has these VMware tools. I will include a link down in the, in the description for how to install those VM tools once you have it up. And then what I did is I created a template from UB1 that has those VM tools already installed and I created a customization setting for it. So I'm going to create a new virtual machine based off that template on RPI 
three, I'll select to customize the operating system and pick that customization that I've already created. And I'm gonna call this UB3. So that customization process will actually go and rename the host UB3 as part of standing it up. And I didn't do a whole bunch of preparation for UB1 before I created the template. In a real world scenario, you would actually want to clean out all the logs and all the settings and sort of reset it back to localhost as the host name if you were creating a template that way. But since we're not doing that, since this is in production, I just created a template directly from UB1. So there we go, there's UB3, and it is booting up and going through its process. It's actually going to boot up, and it hangs on this one stat here where it's waiting for network to be configured. I'm not really sure why that happens. It's something about the template. And the next thing it does is rename itself as UB3, and it reboots a second time. It reboots a second time before the configuration is finished. So it finished its first boot. Now it's going through its second boot. And when that second boot is complete, I should be able to log in with that same username and password. Because remember, I didn't reset anything about UB1. So UB1 and UB3 are effectively the same except for the host name. So there we go. I'm logging in with my username and password. And there we go. We have successfully provisioned a new virtual machine. We've migrated that virtual machine from one Raspberry Pi to another, and we've used a template based off an existing virtual machine to create a new one all on Raspberry Pis. That's that's pretty cool, right? Wow, that was that was some pretty cool stuff, right? <laughs> you can get all this stuff running, and honestly, you don't need a vCenter to do all this. You can just have a single Raspberry Pi to run all this stuff. I'll include down in the description the Samsung drive that I used to plug into it, and I'll include a link to the ISO for the Ubuntu image, and I'll also include a link to how to get VMware tools installed on it, so you can do all the fun things with VMware tools. It's not that hard, you just really just copy and paste some commands in through a shell and you're good to go. But I, I just, this is really impressive to me. And you know, you can just go out and get one of these Raspberry Pis for 50 bucks or whatever. If, if you just need at least four gig of memory in it. That's what I have. They recommend eight, but I've been fine with four. And a thumb drive for storage. And like you're off to the races if you wanna mess around with this stuff. So hopefully this has emboldened you to go out and try that. I think the next thing I wanna do is get Raspberry Pi OS running on a VM in a Raspberry Pi because that's inception. So that might be the next goal. I don't know. What, what would you like to see in this home lab setup? Because I know I have the cluster up and running. Let me know what you'd like to see down in the comments or hit me up on Twitter. It's Ned1313. Until next time, stay healthy, stay safe out there. I'll talk to you soon. Bye now.